looks you, your face looks too like there's an AI filter going on. Uh, not not on me. I don't know. Maybe the light. Oh no. <laughs> maybe maybe you doing Instagram things, huh? You doing one of those like on OnlyFans? I'm a truck, <laughs> a truck driver. Uh, OnlyFans. I said trucking hasn't got like hasn't gotten quite that tight. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. The, some people, some people's making money on the OnlyFans with the truck driving. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you pay your bills the way you got to do it, bro. I'm not judging okay. you. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you're dropping off. <laughs> <laughs> couple, couple, couple of lot lizards. I don't know, you know. <laughs> if, I, if I was that tech savvy, I probably wouldn't have to drive, but... <laughs> this is true. This is true. Uh, talking about your uh, you being tech savvy, I was just talking to Todd, uh, my coworker. He's been at uh, the USM Open like multiple times. He ha he has the uh, the two daughters, and he was like, "Man, Trent, man, he he's making a lot of money off of that video of him in the park doing uh, doing tempo on the on the pole." I'm like, "Nah, Trent, Trent doesn't know how to get in there." And he's like, he's one of me, one of those like techie literates. Like, yes. <laughs> Let me tell you how bad it is. So when I made that video, we didn't have anything like, you know, what we got going on now. And people were just yeah. asking if I could coach them online. And so uh, anyway, I created that that YouTube channel. And after three videos, I couldn't remember how to log in. <laughs> so, <laughs> I tried for like, probably like, I don't know, a month or so, and I was just like, screw it. <laughs> if that thing made any money, I I'll never know about it. <laughs> how, oh, many, yeah. how many views does that video have? That, I feel like that probably is one of the like the older ones that are that are, that are still that's alive like on the, the original like sumo video on YouTube for America. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I I guess if you log into it, I'd probably get notifications, but I actually have to look that video up <laughs> to see whatever it's gotten in views. Because <laughs> I, like I said, I, I don't, I don't remember how to log into that thing. And that thing, that, I made that, what, in 09 or something? 10? 2010? Okay. So it's 14? Uh. Oh. Yeah, that was just the bare basics. And I, I did see, though, that, uh, like, some international guys even were looking at it back in the day. So. It couldn't have been, yeah. uh, it must have been something helpful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, it was. I mean, you had your, your Trent charm in it. Like, you know, yeah, we, yeah I put the rope here and, uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I never, honestly, I never really felt like I was like an expert, you, you know, but I had traveled a little more than a lot of people had at that point. And, uh, I, I like to think I'm pretty observant. That, that's how I used to get better was I would have to watch like hours of like pros and just try to figure out what they were doing because th there really was, even at the pro level, there really wasn't any international guys yet. They were just barely coming in. You had the Hawaiians in the 90s. And outside of that, it was like, I think the Mongolians were just, Asa Shoryu was, you know, kind of in the middle of his run or something. But there just wasn't the, the depth of information available. And, uh, so, so I never, I didn't want to claim to be like an expert when I, you know, I felt like I really, I felt like I understood some things, but I didn't want to go around telling people any bad info. No, but I mean, sumo at, at that time, shit, even, even when I started, it was, there wasn't an internet presence. Like there was, it was still, it was just a wild, wild west. Like you, you know, you just putting, there was just like random sporadic videos. You can't find, you can't easily access the kind of information that that is now uh which you know it's insane now and then you know which the internet has helped with the growth of sumo in in the u.s um yeah when i when i started absolutely. i was i i found a flyer for uh one of andrew's tournaments in like 07 i was like oh cool sumo and then i i emailed him and i was like okay let me just make sure i don't have to wear like one of those like blow up suits because once again, <laughs> I still think that that's the black face of sumo wrestling. Like, I don't, I'm not going to do that. That's crazy. Um, so I was like, oh, and I, re I sent him an email and then he never, he never sent, he never replied or 
maybe I was a little Trentism back then and I just didn't know how to check my email. <laughs> so I could have been in 07 battling Trent. <laughs> I mean, that would have been amazing. I loved it. Andrew's not the most tech savvy person uh, either, so I would I wouldn't be shocked that that uh, you didn't catch a reply. <laughs> All right, uh, what is this? Andrew, you was the uh, most tech savvy bag in the. No, 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 no. You've been trying to cater to all the needs You've been feeling guilty for so long Maybe then our friends, they are enemies Don't you tell them yes, tell them get lost Cause every time you go and ask for help They say sorry but I'm busy So you want to do it yourself Ooh, hold up baby, don't take it Get a friendship if they just make it You don't need to put up with their bullshit Tell them no, 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 no Hold up, baby, don't stress it It ain't worth it, it ain't worth it Christina, don't say nothing. <laughs> I know. I've been very stressed lately. <laughs> every time I see it, every time I see it, <laughs> and it's on the ticker. God damn it! <laughs> I will create a logo. I one day uh, uh, yeah, probably <laughs> when the project's done the logo will be oh, oh, damn it. <laughs> uh, uh, welcome to uh, black in sumo uh i am jj jones uh w here with christina griffin jones my beautiful wife and uh justin kizzard the guy that can't make a logo because he doesn't love us doesn't bullshit crazy <laughs> hey and uh, we are honored to have uh, one of the uh, most decorated, one of, right? One of the blackest the motherfuckers. Hey, whoa, hey. Whoa. I don't know about all that. Hey. Why did you bring race into it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Trent, go ahead. What and are the. <laughs> I'm Trent Sabo, and I don't know. I, <laughs> I used to be a somebody. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> Not give us, give, give us, give us your, give us the the what do you call it the the like a the one minute rundown like what you, how you got into this you know your accolades and how you got into the sport and all that fun stuff we can then we can go down that road. Uh, I mean, how I got into it, it, it's a little bit of a long story, but um, I came to sumo the way everybody used to when I got into it, which was just like randomly. Well, you know, we came across it. And it fit um, sort of our, uh, I don't know, our outlook in a weird sort of way. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, and then uh, I just mostly did it. Uh, unlike a lot of people, I'm not really like a Japan feel, if that makes sense. Like, uh, I'm not yeah, super into yeah. all things Japanese. But um, I liked it because I, uh, I liked wrestling, but uh, at the time when I was like trying to work and go to school and stuff, it just, uh, couple doing all the cardio was really just sucking the fun out of it. And sumo combined uh, two of the things that I like most, not cutting weight and not doing cardio. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, and now how did, you know, cause again, you started pre, you know, when the internet was still pretty, pretty wild. And uh, how did you find Sumo? Or did it find you? I don't know. I found it before the internet was a thing, I think. Um, I yeah. found it in the 90s. Um, uh, when, I, when I was a kid, I was allowed to stay up late uh, during summer. And uh, right at 1130, my bedtime was midnight. So right at 1130, there was a an English language television show called Sumo Digest, and it would give the highlights for the top division. And at that time, um, like uh, Akebono and Takanahana really had a great rivalry going. And uh, as a kid, I don't know, I always kind of marched to the beat of a different drum, I guess. So I, I liked it. I mean, everybody likes heavyweights. And it was kind of, it was, you know, it was like, size because Akebono was tall and massive uh versus like skill and um and then it was like usa versus japan and so it really kind of captivated my my attention and then uh i don't know 
about 10 years later, I stumbled across a flyer advertising a uh, like a sumo tournament. And I actually thought it was the blow up suits. <laughs> That's what they wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, kind of people. Now, who's who's what? What flyer was that for? And whose whose tournament was it? So, I kind of started in in. No, it was. Um, so, if you go all the way back to like the '60s or '70s, you had uh, Ernie Hunt and John Jocks doing sumo um, in Hawaii because there's a, a strong Japanese connection there. And uh, obviously they were in the Navy and they'd been in Japan. And then in the nineties, uh, Yonesuka formally started um, the the IFF with Japan and Brazil, as I understand it. And so uh, New Jersey, uh, you kind of had two powerhouses. You had New Jersey all the way on the east and then you had Hawaii way off in the, the, the Southwest or whatever. Um, and they worked together a little bit, but I don't think there was a lot of like uh, competition between them until, you know, maybe the earlier mid nineties. And at some point, um, John Jocks kind of got tied up with life and uh, same thing with uh, Yone. And um, I came in kind of in what's locally known as like the, the dark ages of amateur sumo, where there was just this, this big void and either John Jocks or Yone would just appoint like whoever they wanted to be on the world team. And um, anyway, this guy named Harry Dedro kind of moved into that void and uh, he, he sort of opened it up, believe it or not, to just your, your average everyday people. And anyway, he was putting on a tournament in his backyard. And, and when I called the guy, uh, he was like, no, we're real actual amateur wrestlers. And I was like, oh, man, I, you know, I, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. But I was like, I'll do it anyway. I, I, just, I had to get my wiggles out, you know, so and uh and then i don't know like i did it it was it was it was the right for me it was the right thing at the right time i kind of liked the the uniqueness of it i liked again no cardio no weight cutting when i started i, was, I think i was like 15 to 13 pounds under the weight the the lightweight limit and um and i don't know i just i kept doing it and eventually i kind of got good like just you know time and grade i guess is what you'd say yeah yeah mm. oh yeah i think I think one of the original uh, Mr. Jocks gave me a couple of like old school items, and this one this was a flyer from when I guess uh, the Hawaiians first met up with the with the guy the guys the Jersey guys, and they had a competition in New York. This is somewhere in, I think it's in the eighties. Oh, wow. yeah, that was. And so he gave he gave me that he he gave me a whole bunch of stuff last time we we interviewed him and I got a little a magazine with Aki Bono in it and it, this this flyer just happened to be in there and he was like oh I didn't know that was in there and I was like uh what is this yeah but you almost good. lost that one yeah hold on yeah, yeah, lost that one. Yep. yeah buddy this yeah, is you know history. look at this shit yeah that may be almost one of a kind I I bet you there's not too many of those floating around. Because yeah. these were not big events, I don't think. The fee was the fee was uh, was three dollars to enter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. Oh man! Yeah, yeah, crazy. and then you even mail it out too. That's crazy. Yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. So I might I might have to frame that one. I mean, you should have already. I know, but I, I keep it. Well, see, I keep it in. I keep it. All the stuff that Mr. Jocks gave me. I put it in this little uh, plastic folder thing. Shame. Shame. I know. He even gave, I don't know what stuff that he got. He got mailed to him from some of the Hawaiian, uh, the Hawaiian peoples. I don't know. And it's got like a little sumo sticker on it. I was like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Anyhow. I, I'll tell you, I'd hold on to that because, uh, you know, I think this? John Jock, yeah. He's um well he's outlived most of those those guys and so yeah. he may be the last one that kind of got that stuff you know floating yeah. around because uh, Yone's passed I know most of the original Hawaiians have passed uh, yep. I think Kenna's one of the one of the last ones that like grew up training with uh, John and I think he came in kind of late like in the nineties so you know all that yeah. stuff from the seventies and eighties those guys are gone I think that's crazy but that's pretty cool man. Yeah, it, it was that last time when we were in we were in Salt Lake City during the pandemic. I think it was like 2021 20, or something like that or whatever. 
and me and Caleb had did had wanted to sit down and do an interview with him, and we sat we sat there and shot the shit with him and and got drunk and drank it. I get and then afterwards he was just like, you know, you know, I you know I haven't met people who are you know who are this excited about sumo in a while and yada 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 and he just he was just giving us giving both of us gifts and I was like god damn okay so he was just giving you know giving passing on a piece of American sumo history to people who would actually give a shit and then you know maybe one day I'll actually you know pass that on to some young buck or whatever but yeah I'm glad, yeah, for I'm, sure. I'm glad to have had that time with him but you know it, you know he's a bit up there in age so you know who knows yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was one of the things I was real pleased uh, with uh, Tom for doing was uh, Tom started really compiling, you know, all the, the history, you know, the like the individual records and things like that. Yeah. And um, but, but, you know, even Tom has struggled trying to find like information going back past the late 90s. So, you know, yeah. Um, it's uh yeah i would definitely i would keep that stuff like i say because uh i'm not saying there's yeah. there's no copies but where, where most of those people have already passed you know like their kids might have got rid of it or something and yeah yeah and okay. at some point it, i i assume i don't know like I, i'm a i'm a history buff with when it comes to things and I, I i assume at some point in time somebody's gonna care enough to compile american sumo history and actually have no, I don't know. Yes. Call me crazy, but it would be nice to have like a little museum or something. Oh my gosh, um, Justin, we're gonna do that. So stop playing. I think it'd be awesome. We're gonna we're gonna do like a a really dope like traveling kind of. And this is this is also history, you know what we're <laughs> what we're doing here. Um, so yeah, no, I yep. think we should totally do. We do need to do a, a museum, but um. But also not wanting to like kill the vibe or shift ship the shank uh so everyone can get shanked uh i'll 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 fix that wow. post production no you're not <laughs> it, got, it got violent that's um, gonna be me we not only it is gonna be jj god bless you <laughs> um we not only have trent on here you know black and sumo because trent is an, is an amazing friend to the black peoples of America, Wait, of, of America, to the black people. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys know. Because, I don't. <laughs> but because, don't do it, Trent. Stop, stop. Come on. Come here, please. We don't have enough time to delete what you're about to say. Um, but, but because Trent was the friend to an amazing <laughs> black sumo pioneer. So, so Trent. Uh, we want, we want, we want the, we want the stories. Tell us about men. Oh, yes. Uh, you could, you could write books on that guy. He's, uh, would you talk about like, like living your life to the fullest or just taking advantage of, of any opportunity that's presented to you? This, this guy did it in spades. And, uh, I would say potentially like, uh, Two of the most influential people, maybe for uh, at least for me, definitely, but maybe for some other people, is probably Rene Marte and, and Manny. Um, yep. Y you know, Rene kind of he took me under his wing a little bit when I was first getting started. At, you know, my first worlds and stuff, and then uh, Manny just had a he had a way about him of just making everybody feel like loved and motivated. It was crazy. You could tell that man you murdered somebody, and he'd be like, you know, he'd make you feel like it wasn't that big a deal. <laughs> It's okay, you know. <laughs> I bet you murdered them good, didn't you? They had coming. I bet. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. He, it was just amazing. Like, I don't think people realize like how big he was if you never met him in person. But to put it maybe in like context, like if you were to stand a queen size bed up, you, you know, and he was to stand in front of it. The only part of that mattress you would see would be the corners up by his head. But the, the rest was gone. And yeah. I mean, he was almost seven feet tall, which is, that's huge. You know, he was taller than Michael Jordan, I think. And uh, yeah. and then his his best fighting weight, I think, was between probably 550 and 650. But, um, you know, he, he still competed, although not at an elite level, at over 700 pounds. And he got as big as 820. That's... 
So if, Yo. so you guys, if I'm sure you can find this video somewhere, or pictures of it, but you guys I've have seen all seen pictures Kelly Knight. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I was saying I've I've seen the so, picture, the most famous picture of you hit like hitting him at the Tachi eye, and it and it put into comparison how big he was because you were like of the finger and he was like a whole hand like but you you had yeah you were, like, you were you were deep inside and i was like oh manny yarborough was a was a hefty motherfucker <laughs> dude he was like, the, okay. like paul bunyan like the the legend of paul bunyan kind of. man he was if you see there's he came to idaho to compete and he fought kelly kelly's over 400 pounds kelly's like 420 440 when you see him and Kelly like fight up, he's literally twice what Kelly is. It's it's just insane. <laughs> or uh, I would say, perhaps one of my favorite stories about him. I mean, I, I love all of them, but we did a we did a charity event for Ronald McDonald House, and uh, Dan was videotaping it like in the back. So you have the the ring, and then there was all these like tables and seats around it and stuff. And uh, so Dan is just behind the tables. And he's videotaping this, and Manny comes out. He comes walking down the aisle to the ring, and we didn't know it at the time. But later on, when we watched the video, you can hear people talking, and they don't think he's real. There, there, there's two, there's two guys and then a girl. They're arguing, and one of them is like, "No, that's not a, that's not a person. That's an animatronic, like a Snuffleupagus or something." They thought they was like. <laughs> of a costume walking to the ring because he was so big you know and uh, <laughs> it's anyway it's pretty, it's pretty hilarious but that's literally how big he was i mean he, he just didn't even look real and Damn. and then what's crazy is he had a personality and a heart that was that was bigger than his body i mean people says. from around the world they would meet this man and immediately fall in love with him you know, communists from the Soviet, you know, block, you know, Asians, you know, anybody you can think of, he would just show up at a tournament and people were just enamored. It was amazing. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty cool. What, uh, what have you, have you ever had to compete with him in an open weight? Um, I, I did. Only once. Um, that was in Idaho where that picture came from. Um, okay. Okay. okay, that's one. And I, I would say the sad one was sad thing. What's that? Sorry, no, I was I was gonna say. Do you remember what year that was? So I, I just want to for my own records. Uh, that's. We could find out. Okay. I think it would have been maybe twenty thirteen or something. Um, one of the sad things about Manny is uh, most his his best most competitive time uh, really wasn't there wasn't much recorded history of it because um, when most of what you're seeing is when he was one too heavy but I think even more important was he was he was older a lot of people don't realize that when you when you most of the pictures you see Manny in he's in his late forties really wow yeah wow. so. If, I mean, if you if you could have seen him, you know, in his early thirties, you, you you get a much different. I, uh, I couldn't find, I couldn't find you, know. you, Trent, but I did find Andrew. <laughs> so that that one was in Wyoming. That's at the Nationals. That was his last time that he ever competed, like in a real a real event. Really? So he went one and one. He beat, yeah, he beat Andrew, and then his next fight was against Renee. And Renee, uh, Renee was able to flip him. I think he was pretty happy oh, about it. So that might have been yeah. the first time, maybe the only time Renee beat him. I don't know, but he was pretty happy about it. Damn, that's a. Geez, you say he's over five hundred pounds and be able to being able to to flip him. Well, that's, yeah, he was. I think, he was about seven twenty in that. I think. Oh, wow. which is objectively a lot. That's like as much as all four of us, if we stacked on top yeah. of each other, like transform. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what was, uh, what, what was like when Manny would talk about why he did sumo and stuff, what was like his kind of motivation? Why did he love it so much? If, if you were 
if you're able to kind of speak to that, to convos you have with them or um, or with maybe how he even just led his, led his sumo life? Um, I think Manny was a natural born competitor. Uh, he was far more athletic than his body shape would, would indicate. But uh, a lot of people don't know he was an All-American wrestler and an All-American football player at Morgan State University. Um, he got a brown belt in judo, if I'm not mistaken. And really? I don't, yeah, yeah, he was he was quite athletic. Even it's funny. Um, so uh, when he was wrestling, they did there there was no cap on the heavyweight, and so he hmm. claims uh, at in college he was about 400 pounds. And uh, yeah, he was an All-American. He claims that uh, there was an offer to play in the NFL, but they wanted him to get down to 300 pounds. And this was just before they signed the refrigerator. And so back then the, the thought was anybody that big just wouldn't be good, you know. But right. according to Manny, he was already at like, I think 12 or 15% body fat. And he's like, ain't no way I could lose 100 pounds, you know. So he kind of just didn't mess with it too much, I don't think. And then, of course, the refrigerator showed up and it turned out, you know, like, oh, that's pretty. <laughs> so they, may, they maybe should have signed him. Um, and he just he moved into judo after that and he he did well. I, I didn't I don't quite understand the context. I don't remember the story exactly, but um, I think he was he qualified for the Olympic trials, but he missed them. Um, he. Basically, I don't know. They should have left earlier, I guess. They were in Jersey, but they got stuck in traffic is what, what I was told. And so he uh, he might have been in the Olympics for judo, but he didn't he didn't technically Do you know qualify. what year this was? Wow. Do you know what year this was? Man, I wish you guys would have interviewed me. <laughs> um, I, 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 I think it was all the years blending together. I used, you know, I used to know all this stuff by heart, but I've been out for a while, so... <laughs> Um, Leonard Thomas might know. Unfortunately, Yone passed, but uh, Leonard Thomas, I think, was the president or running the school for a while. That or um, Nicholas Yonezuka, who's Yone's kid, who's the coach there now, uh, might might have the answer on that. Um, but yeah, I mean, you and of course, I'm sure you guys know Manny competed in MMA. Yep. 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 Didn't he? He so was in. You, it was. It was kind of. It was pre UFC. Didn't he? Did, he did. He did. Did he do Pride or which one? Which one did he do? No, he did UFC. Both. He did UFC. His first. Yeah, he did UFC. The first. But I thought. He, oh, sorry. the first one was UFC number three. I think was it was the way he showed up. He fought oh, Keith Hackney. All right, good. Then. I don't even know how he lost that match. I don't know what was going. On. Well, I know he wasn't. Nobody, by the way, back then really knew what they were doing. But uh, course, if you go yeah. back and you watch the video, people don't UFC believe me when I wild. when I tell them. Basically, Manny, these guys showed up, but they didn't know what to expect. But uh, anyway, if you if you go back and you watch the video, he don't even have a mouthpiece in. But not only that, he's chewing gum. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my <laughs> Dang. Bro, there was like there was. Oh, there was no safety in the beginning of of UFC. Like it was, yeah, there was no safety. But really but they bad. did modify the rules just enough to make sure that the Gracies were going to win. They modified uh, just enough because it was just a platform for them to present jujitsu to the world, right? True. But there was there was like, oh, you can't wear shoes if you're doing this. You can't do this. Oh, you can't like. Like um um uh, what's his name? Ken Shamrock has a has a good uh like story about it where he was like trying to do heel hooks and all kinds of stuff and they wouldn't let him do it. Yes, mm. Gracie Gate. Yes. Interesting. Cause it, there was a lot of there was a lot of in the in the early obscure days of UFC, there was some there was a lot of like wrestlers. Um I think there was what was that one guy's name? Kimbo? He, no, no. He was a wrestler. Dude looked like like uh Magnum PI. He had a fucking he had a Oh thing. Don Fry. Don Fry. Yes. Wait, 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 no, no. Dan Severn. Dan Severn. Is it are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, in a, UFC or in Pride? UFC. In UFC. Dan Severn. Okay. Well Fry, 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 Fry started. Pride. 
Wait, wait. He started in the UFC. He, he wore the he wore the wrestling shorts, that, which was about it. That was. Uh, was it American flag? I think it was. Hold. Yeah. I, if I see if I see his face, what do you say, Dan Fry? Don Don Fry. Don Fry. Don Fry. If you America. Dan Severn had like the WWF shorts on, Fry wore like booty shorts. Yeah, no, no, no. Shorts, and there was the American flag. That was the best part. Yeah, Don part. Don Fry was a killer. Don Fry was the one that I was that I was talking about. That's him. I'm gonna see his picture. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Bro, he still got the mustache. God. Oh yeah. Damn. Oh yeah. Wow. Dan Severn has a weird record where I think he's like 112 or something weird like that, where he's still fighting people in like weird organizations that I haven't seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a current record. It's weird. It's weird. He's like the Trent of MMA. Just won't go away. <laughs> Just roll He's like the JDT. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your favorite story about Manny? Like I, I, we we spoke with with uh, with uh, with everybody a little bit, right? And everybody has their story. Everybody that's been around Manny has their story. What's your story? What's a wild one? Yeah, well, I can't tell you the best one, like, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Trent, I know you, so we will keep that one. We'll keep those ones offline. But uh, <laughs> the. The third, the PG thirteen stories. It can get a little crazy, but you know. Ah, <laughs> uh, man, it's it's hard because you know, anytime you're around that dude, it it was something else. I, I mean, he really had a way of just he, you know, he had a gravitational pull. You know, like um, man, I don't know. I mean, I could tell stories about him all day. I don't know if I have a favorite, but um. Something I would just say what I one of the things that, something yeah. wild at world. Yeah. Well, like I said, Manny had, Manny had a, we had a thick old we, we, we <laughs> from back then. The stuff we did back then, we not we can't talk about it now. <laughs> keep but, it keep the PG thirteen. Hey, it's wild worlds PG thirteen because we ain't trying to get blocked off. Uh, the internet. One, of, hey. one, of, one of the ones that. We, one of the ones that was good was there used to be some sort of sports day in like the Czech Republic and uh, they had just come out of communism and there was like these Czech brothers that were really into sumo and they had like a hotel and stuff and um, anyway they had like a, a thing in the basement like a dojo like a dirt one and then they would uh, you could you could watch them practice like from the dining room floor and stuff but anyway they brought him out uh, for this sports day and um, you know he he just did his demos and competed and stuff but the thing that we both sort of thought was funny was uh we were having beers afterwards and stuff and at first it's just you know jolly and happy and relaxed and then somebody put on like old communist music or whatever oh, <laughs> and he was like you know he was like this is pretty catchy once you get a few beers in here he's like so i i just <laughs> thought it he, he thought it was kind of funny too, but I thought it was interesting that again, this man could just, he could transcend so easily between things. And uh, I, I don't know, I mean, big black American and former Soviet country, you know, and it's like, he's just enjoying the shit out of old uh, military songs. It's kind of entertaining. <laughs> That's People really don't know how weird and interesting post world tournaments can be in, uh, in random places in the world you you can't not have us have some kind of a story if you go if you go overseas for for a uh, for a tournament I, and, and and i'm sure you know prior to all the social media going 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 crazy i bet you it was even it was probably even even worse back in the day uh and, or you know in a, in a in a fun sense like like the, the kind of random adventure that you could have through like you know probably you know, yeah. doing, doing shots with russians and you know in a, in a back alley or whatever i don't know dang justin i would say so your funny story. that was me that was me in taiwan <laughs> listen listen <laughs> yeah well Trent knows. <laughs> I don't know anything, man. 
I'm like Sergeant <laughs> Schultz. I know nothing, nothing, nothing. You're right. You're right. You're, right. Baby, you're a good friend. You're a good friend. <laughs> I'm like a swift friend. You know, it's like I take it in and never leaves. Just gets lost. But one of the I things mean, that used to be really fun about uh, Sumo when it was starting was um, they it, it was kind of like in those movies where they're trying to put together like a, a super team to pull off some kind of heist or something crazy. And, <laughs> you know, people didn't really they didn't have a good understanding of Sumo when it first was presented to the world stage, you know, so a, a lot of people were just like, OK, we need big guys. And then, you know, you want to be athletic and stuff. And so you would. You would just find these really random, really obscure, like giant people that were athletic, and they would just kidnap them and make them do sumo, <laughs> essentially. And um, you know, Manny fit that bill, but there was there was a kind of a Manny figure from all over the world. So you know, the Germans had Torsten Scheibel, uh, Fred Craig was out of New Zealand. Um, I'm trying to think some of the other real big ones. You had oh, um, Mark Robin. What's New that? Zealand had a, New Zealand had a club. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, they. I, yeah, they, they used to up until recently. I, I don't know if they still do or not, but um, they used to. I would. I mean, it, it's not shocking. It just. It's just they're they're not on the map as of as as of late. And it. But it's you know culturally, I could just see them you know doing fairly well. I mean, you know, with the uh, the Maori people and stuff mm. being. Yeah, yeah, not so long ago, a couple of years, maybe, I don't know, I don't even know, but it wasn't that long ago, it was less than 10 years ago, they had that guy Mark Tanu, I don't know if you guys heard of him, um, I, he was really massive, they wanted him to go pro, but uh, he he basically, he got homesick and didn't want to do it, but they sent him out to a, that island like, like a stable or something, <laughs> mm. yeah, they're, they're very family oriented. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, he competed at the World Championships. I think he got, I think he got bronze in his first World Championships, and then uh, I think what else he did. He did he did a couple other things. He had a little moment of, of, of real glory where people were really hot on him. But he just, I don't. I mean, I, I don't. I didn't know the guy that well. But the the stories I heard was he just his heart wasn't. You can be physically gifted enough to be a pro athlete, but you also have to have the like the mental fortitude, and a lot of people yeah, yeah. don't have that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you ever went against him, Trent, Mark? I, I did not, um, but I know, I know he wasn't easy. He was a very, very solid uh, five hundred pounder, and he was at least six five, maybe taller than that. But I remember he was fighting Stillian from Bulgaria, and Stillian is something Stillian's else, man. Like I mean, he's. he's, he's yeah. Especially yeah, yeah, yeah. back in the heyday. Oh wow. Yeah. He could beat a lot of guys. And Tano just kinda of played with him. You know, he um, I mean it was it was a decent match, but I mean so yeah, he and he and he did well. I mean, it's pretty unusual. I d I don't know of anybody that's ever just showed up at their first worlds that didn't have prior like Japanese training and meddled. And Tano did, so Wow. Now how many how many medals did uh, did Manny did Manny get it? He, I would wasn't he? I would assume. I think he's the first African American to have have medaled at Worlds. Um, or or am I, I crazy? I don't know. No, no. So I I don't know specifically who came first, but there used to be an African man, if I'm not mistaken, that medaled. He got silver at least two or three times. Manny might have been before him. So if you want to just say black in general, I think Manny holds that distinction. If you're saying, uh, you know, African, I, there was another guy. I can't remember his name, though. Have you, have you seen, um, oh, gosh, I don't, I don't know if it has a name. I've got a video. I don't know if you guys have seen it. I think they did put it up online for the IFS website. But uh, if you have it, it's got videos of both Manny and Mike Mumford. Uh, in the world championships, it's got Mark Robinson in there, um, and it's got the little African guy, the lightweight that whose name I can't remember. Uh, Mumford. Anyway, if you don't if you, if you don't find it, I've, I've got the video, the old VHS tapes tape somewhere. <laughs> Do you? I can. Um, we will <laughs> we will take those, and I will digitize them. Dead ass. Yeah, that needs to be yeah. digitized. 
before yeah. your ass goes and loses it in a box somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Any seriously, no, 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 no. anything, anything you've got, one of us would you know can digi can digitize it because uh, this kind of history, okay. like it 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 needs to be it needs to be locked in somewhere so that you know so that it's not you know lost lost in the sauce. You know, we gotta we gotta keep this history. Well, sure. It was uh, so the video was the original video that the IFS would send out to countries to form a sumo federation, and uh, so oh. it, so you have you have basically an introduction. It's talking about it, and then it shows like some of the matches from the very first World Championships. Um, I forget everything that's on there. I know at the very end they go over the Camarte. Uh, okay. 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 Did it? Did it? Uh, it <laughs> was it old school? Like, like when when it switched the scene, did it go and then on to the next scene? <laughs> or I, I it was trying to get the yeah, Star Wars, the Star Wars, the Star Wars yeah, thing. Uh, <laughs> just a hard count. It was um, so. It was hey, Trent, I, I have like, a oh. question. Sure. A question. So. Um, we're, we're coming uh, right about at to, uh, to the end of this one and we'll definitely get you on for a another episode because this is so much fun um, but if Manny was in his prime so prime Manny how would he do today ooh that's a damn good question um, yeah you know it's a little hard to say obviously because people have really gotten very good technique at sumo now and yeah. in the beginning those yeah. guys didn't have it but I do have to say uh, Manny was very mobile for his size, and when you're talking about that kind of weight, especially when it's uh, has like uh, what I always tell people is like you might be able to squat 400 pounds, but if it jumped off the rack and tried to attack, you'd be a different experience. <laughs> and uh, so I, I would say I still believe Manny would be, you know, he, he'd always be in the running for the top four. Okay, he, he definitely. I mean, he he was a he was a big dude that was like i said he was he was strong too a lot of people don't realize how strong he was so i mean you you think uh i mean he, he was just like the hawaiians i mean he didn't have the pro training but if he was yeah. competing today at his optimal weight and age uh, i don't think yeah he'd, he'd he'd be in the running for top four every time i think nice okay nice, nice. heck yeah heck yeah oh man that, that's a, uh, that's a message out there for any any little young future mannies. The U.S. the U.S. needs you, big boy. The U.S. needs you and big girl. Yeah, if, if you if if you I mean it's it's open to anybody. But one of the fun things about sumo, I know a lot of people don't want to see only the big guys, but it was like that was their time to shine. And yeah. they, you know, one of the things that made the world so fun back in the day is you, you, you would find these guys that were basically kind of sore thumbs back home. You know, they were just so big. Everybody was, every time they meet them, they're like, damn, you're big, you know, or, yeah. and, but then when they would get to the sumo, the world championships, it was like all their friends were there, you know, they fit right in, they weren't abnormal yeah. and they would cut loose in a way that you just didn't see in their everyday life. You know, it was kind of the Island of Misfits or something, you know, they just all, they all <laughs> knew we they not knew each other, but they they could relate to each other. They felt safe and comfortable with each other. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. Hell yeah! Nice. And that is sumo. That that is sumo. That is. Yeah. Sumo. <laughs> um, with that, yeah, um, this is this has been a lot of fun. Uh, I I I can't wait to hear more stories because as you get older, I feel like these stories are just going to get looser and just going to fall off your tongue like some of these wild stories that oh, you're you just holding a few shots oh yeah and then is they're just gonna they're just gonna come out and i could start bleeping them or replace you with an ai avatar or something like that uh it just it'll be it'll be fine it'll be fine it'll be like uh dr robotnik talking about sonic the hedgehog but for me i'll have the story and that's what's important um <laughs> christina do you have any questions for mr trent no, just always uh, love and appreciate you, Trent. The uh, the the confidence you you walk around with, I love it. I love to see it, and uh, <laughs> yeah, so happy, so happy to call you teammate and friend. Love you, Trent. Thanks for all no, these stories. Yeah, I, I should have prepared maybe a little better, uh, but 
I don't know. Yeah, we could talk about it, maybe do an updated version or something. Um, yeah. But he's, I, I think the coolest thing with Manny was just, just being around the guy. He, he just brought out the best in people, you know, he, like everybody in the, uh, that, that that tournament we hosted in Wyoming where he fought Andrew, he stayed um, at my at my place, actually my, my ex's place. But it was crazy because we had like an upstairs loft apartment. And uh, anyway, <laughs> two things that I, I, I really liked, I remember about it was going up the top stairs, it was only like, I think like six feet or something. So, he, you know, he couldn't stand up. So he got down and he would crawl up the steps like a gorilla every time he came upstairs and he took up the whole hallway i mean there's only a little bit of space at the top and this man was on all fours and then when he stepped on the floor the first time there, like there was like a like an obvious like bowing of the floor and i was like oh man i, was like, I hope he doesn't go through and you know he, just, he took all that in stride and none of that stuff ever you know he, he always had a really good attitude about everything we picked him up from the airport and he didn't fit in the car like most of the time and we had a subaru and so we we put the back seats down and we we slid him in the back and as soon as we pulled away he started banging on the window and screaming help help white people get me and, I, <laughs> and all these people where we picked him up they were like really they couldn't tell if he was joking they were like looking and he was like banging on the window and screaming and, and uh <laughs> Anyway, we had, uh, you know, it's interesting, real quick, I know you wanted to shut this down, but talking about like how this man used to sort of be able to like, like bridge um, just just relationships with people. One of the best times I've ever spent uh, with people just hanging out was uh, we were we were down on the porch at my place. It was me and Manny, Jovan and Andrew Freund. And, you know, a lot of people feel a certain way about Andrew and, you know, me and I'm different and Javon is different and um, we all four of us we we had we must have talked for about four or five hours and we covered a, a, a wide range of topics music was a big one and it was just it, it was like like we we were all best friends or something it was really it was really crazy the way that uh, you know when people talk about wanting to like you know meet people you know uh, he, he was he was like a master of that it was insane I, you know it was like there was no animosity just just a free flowing exchange of ideas and thoughts and things and um you know we weren't even drinking or anything and it was just it was a very different diverse group of people and we just like i said you'd have thought we'd have been best friends for 50 years so hell yeah anyway nice and with that um we've got to go um bye See ya. Don't be Beatrice.